Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how aldosterone is synthesized by the adrenal cortex. So with that, let's give it a go. So before we talk about the steps in the synthesis of aldosterone, I wanna first remind you of the different layers of the adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands have many different layers, and the first layer is going to be called the capsule. So the capsule is connective tissue that encapsulates the entire adrenal gland. And below the capsule, we have the adrenal cortex. So the adrenal cortex is made up of three layers. The very uppermost layer is going to be called the zona glomerulosa. So the zona glomerulosa is the uppermost layer of the adrenal cortex. It produces the mineral corticoid aldosterone. Now the layer below the zona glomerulosa is going to be called the zona fasciculata. So the zona fasciculata is the second layer of the adrenal cortex, and it's going to be responsible for producing cortisol. And then the final layer of the adrenal cortex is going to be the zona reticularis. So the zona reticularis is the final layer of the adrenal cortex, and it's responsible for producing androgens, DHEA, and androstenedione. Now the final region of the adrenal gland is going to be the adrenal medulla. The adrenal medulla is responsible for producing epinephrine as well as variable amounts of norepinephrine. So these are all the layers of the adrenal gland. So in this video, we're not really going to be focusing on the details of the individual chemical reactions. We're just going to be focusing on the main enzymes that are used in order to synthesize aldosterone. So in order to form aldosterone, we need a starting material. And the starting material is going to be cholesterol. So aldosterone is going to be derived from cholesterol. And cholesterol is obtained from two main sources. So the first source that cells get their cholesterol from is going to be from circulating LDL. Now LDL is a protein that carries cholesterol. And so basically what the cells do is they use LDL receptor mediated endocytosis to bring LDL into the cells. And then once the LDL is in the cells, they can use the cholesterol that was carried by that LDL in order to form corticosteroids steroids and other things. So circulating LDL is a very important source of cholesterol. Another source of cholesterol is going to be from acetate. So the cells can actually synthesize cholesterol from acetate using de novo synthesis. So the cells can have a number of enzymes that are going to catalyze the series of reactions needed in order to convert acetate into cholesterol. So these are the two most important sources of cholesterol that cells use. So after the cells get their cholesterol, they can use that cholesterol in order to form cortical steroids like aldosterone. So what happens to this cholesterol? Well the first step is the cholesterol has to move into the mitochondria and once it's in the mitochondria the cell can convert this cholesterol into pregnenolone by using the enzyme called SCC enzyme. So SCC enzyme is also called the side chain cleavage enzyme and the side chain cleavage enzyme is very important because it catalyzes the rate determining step of aldosterone synthesis. After pregnenolone is formed, the pregnenolone will then move out of the mitochondria and move into the smooth endoplasmic reticulum where it will undergo the remaining series of reactions in order to form aldosterone. So the next enzyme that pregnenolone is going to encounter is 3-beta-HSD. So 3-beta-HSD catalyzes the conversion of pregnenolone into progesterone. So this is the first enzyme that pregnenolone encounters in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. After progesterone is formed, progesterone will then encounter another enzyme called 21-alpha-hydroxylase, which will catalyze the conversion of progesterone into 11-deoxycorticosterone. 11-deoxycorticosterone will then move into the mitochondria. And once it's in the mitochondria, 11-deoxycorticosterone can undergo the remaining set of reactions in order to form aldosterone. So the next enzyme this molecule is going to encounter in the mitochondria is going to be 11-beta-hydroxylase. So once the 11-deoxycorticosterone is in the mitochondria, 11-deoxycorticosterone is going to be converted into the molecule corticosterone by 11-beta-hydroxylase. The corticosterone will then be converted into aldosterone 
by aldosterone synthase. So this is basically how aldosterone is formed in the zona glomerulosa. So after the aldosterone is formed, the aldosterone then can move out of the cell and go into the bloodstream. And once aldosterone is in the blood plasma, it can either remain free or bound to protein. Now around 37% of aldosterone remains free in the blood plasma, but the remaining is going to bind to proteins. So 21% of aldosterone is going to weakly bind to cortisol binding globulin, and then the remaining 42% is going to weakly bind to albumin. So that's it for this video. I hope this video helped you understand how aldosterone is synthesized by the adrenal cortex, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.